I have an idea. Let's talk about basing. It's time we talked about bases. So, the way that I see it, every model is a cinematic moment. And as a the creator, the modeler, it's up to us to kind of capture that moment and add a bit to the atmosphere, the feeling of the model, and also build on the silhouette. Um, every model kind of has an optimal viewing angle, so we'll be using that to guide the construction of the space. Um, but yeah, just a few words about, about the theory. You can see the model here. Um, what I was going for was kind of a, I mean, it's a war cry model, so ruined in, you know, battlefield, maybe a siege has taken place, so I have the the pointy sticks with the rope sticking out and a discarded weapon, or maybe he, um, the minotaur just gored a victim or something. But either way, I kind of want to add to that forward-facing posture that he has with some jagged rocks and spikes, and also try to tell a little bit of a story and, you know, create the sense that there's there's a bit of motion going on here you know, forging the narrative. So let's get into some of the materials and I'll walk you through the build. The first thing I have here is some cork board. This is uh, one of the cornerstones of my my approach. You can see you can stage the model nicely, kind of layers up like a, like a nice cake. Alternatively, using a piece of bark or driftwood as a, as a start provides a good foundation. Um, I wanted a few embattlements, uh, discarded weapons, you know, so I have axes, match heads, or match sticks, some roots, the essentials, skulls, of course. You'll always find a skull on the battlefield, and that's just some, some rope I got from a hobby shop. It's rope for a pirate ship kit. This is some slate that I smashed to pieces with a hammer to various sizes. And then to start off, See, I'm just roughly fitting the cork board onto the base. Grip it and rip it. Just tearing it, making sure it doesn't overhang too far. See, I've got kind of a set of stairs going on at the, at the core of everything. Um, I know at the back side I want to have some of these pieces of slate jutting out, so I'll go ahead and make a little room for that. Just slice away at it the way of the blade. And then we'll just... As long as everything is all fitting nicely, the model is decently centered on the base. After this dries, I can go ahead and test fit them. Of course, ripping away a bit, making sure that the cork board's still sloping. And we'll start gluing a few larger pieces. Um, when you're making a base, you want to be working from larger to smaller. Got that in place, so start shaving our punji pit. This is one of those moments when making it on a miniature is exactly the same as it is making it in real life. If you need to shave a spike from a stick, you know what to do. <laughs> Large or small. And we'll get those in place. You know, again, I'm I'm thinking about that that forward pointing motion, just really trying to emphasize that intimidating presence and kind of you know impending doom that, that minotaur captures i like to think you know maybe he just knocked somebody down or wherever he is he's definitely in the middle of the action you know stomping on heads I'll make a little space and you know i'm also test fitting him here and there making sure that his weaponry isn't getting in the way of any of these spikes I'll lay that down. Sometimes I'll take my paintbrush and dip it in some water and then just touch that to the glue. It makes it dry a little quicker. That's what that white residue on the stones is. It creates a quick bond. So off camera I had to wrap this. It took a little doing to wrap it around the stick and glue it in place and not have it look entirely messy. But you can see the results here. I'll drop a dab of glue on each one of these wrappings. Um, you just want to think about micro details, make things more interesting. Give people something to, to focus on, you know, paint a picture, create that, that narrative, 
Now, now I want some crumbled rocks descending in front of him. I don't want to block the view, but I still want to have some of that that jaggedness, that texture. Make sure that one's pointing upwards. It might be a little bit difficult. You're seeing this in time lapse. Sometimes uh, gluing stones in place can take time as they're a little bit heavy. <laughs> but uh, where there's time lapse, there's a way. I'll uh, drop a little bit of dirt on top of it as well, <laughs> just to make sure everything's nice and secure once I get that pointy piece in line. <laughs> More glue. There you go. That'll always fix it. You see I'm kind of covering that slope as well as it angles upwards. If you want those those steps showing, that's fine too. I want to have more of a kind of mounded, trampled effect. Yeah, looking nice. <laughs> you can see it's starting to, to take form so I can lay some super glue down, just crush up some dirt, drizzle the finer uh, powdery bits onto the glue, maybe drop some on top of it. The phrase here is capillary action. That's why I like this liquid super glue. And I get the cheap stuff in small bottles. Um, sometimes I go a long time before I, I use more glue, so I'm not you know, losing an entire bottle if the tip of it gets clogged. A lot of time I can just switch it out with other bottles. But yeah, this is probably uh, about a one bottle project. There we go, just covering up the seams. Now we'll uh, see. I'm gonna drill a hole in the bottom of his foot. I just want I want to pin him onto the base, to make sure he's nice and secure. So just a little hand drill, some brass rod, a dab of glue, and then I'll be able to press that into the cork board. And you can you can test fit him, you know, pop him out, put him back in. Just make sure the position is is just right. Checking those those angles that you know he's going to be viewed from. Make sure his tail isn't rubbing up against anything. You want to leave a little bit of space. You know, generally you don't want the model rubbing up against pieces of the base. You want to maintain a little bit of negative space and lightness. I can use the opposite side of the glue bottle to spread that glue out as well. Um, I'll add more dirt to the base after I glue the model down, but because the base would block some access to the figure, I'm um, just going to leave him detached, but I can still lay a little bit of texture down and you know, I'll have to mount it up over the little tactical rock that came attached to his foot. But that's fine. I don't mind taking the time to do it right, going back and forth. I'll slip a little skull in there again. Those micro details. I, I like how the beak just hangs over the, the edge of the base slightly, kind of breaking into that negative space just outside of that boundary without going too far. And just, you know, to make things more interesting, a root sticking out, you never know, there's roots popping up and you're just trying to slay, but you're tripping and getting your foot caught on all these skulls and roots. Yeah, a little bit of dirt to cover up the bond, <laughs> as usual. Just cover it all in dirt. Oh yeah, there's that final piece of the pie, that sweet discarded weapon. Maybe someone is just disarmed, but yeah, this is a really fun detail with plenty of space for the model. And that'll do it. Thanks for checking out this video. Well, thank you for supporting this Patreon and allowing me to make these videos. And I hope that it gives you some insight into the process. I'll definitely be making more extensive bases and project overviews going forward, but I thought this was a good opportunity to stop and do an introductory level of, of basing. So my challenge to you is to go out, find some items from outside, pull up some roots, dry them out, get some bark off of a tree, some twigs, some interesting stones. Maybe you'll find a uh, skeleton or some kind of seed pods or something interesting. See what you can find and try to make something from it. You don't have to even paint this project, but just try to 
See what you can create.